Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is a uh, drop slash OLKB Prionic Mechanical Keyboard, OLKB 60-3. Um, first off, though, I know a number of you are probably thinking, wait a second, hold on, am I in the right channel here? This sounds like Nick Shabazz, but he's talking about a keyboard. What gifts? Well, for those of you who are regular fans of my channel, you'll know that I usually talk about everyday tools, like, for instance, wristwatches, or perhaps uh, pocket knives, or something along those lines pens, etc. Fact is, I'm a giant nerd, and so a part of my everyday life, a part of my everyday tools are actually input devices for computers, like keyboards, mice, etc. And I've decided I'm going to do a couple of videos in that, in that vein here from time to time as they come up. And so that's what we got going on here. As always, I want to thank my Patreon patrons for making the channel possible. And um, as always, I want to do a quick size comparison right quick. Here it is um, to start with, as is tradition for the channel, uh, against the Spydeco Delica. And what we see is actually this is a very small little keyboard here. I mean, this is six inches on top of this keyboard. And I'll also show it to you here next to a relatively large keyboard. This was actually my daily driver for a long time. This is a Kinesis Gaming full-size keyboard. You can see it's split down the middle, but this should give you a sense of exactly how small this damn thing is. This thing fits pretty much on the home row of your average keyboard there um, on this very bottom part. This is a much smaller keyboard than usual. Actually, I should highlight that there are a couple of ways in which this keyboard is very weird, and I'll talk about what's going on right here in a bit here, but this is a, a, a couple of different kinds of weird. To start with, it is a much smaller keyboard. It is a 60% keyboard. What you're going to see is we're actually missing some keys from time to time. We're missing some, uh, some of the keys, like, for instance, the brackets uh, over here, the back slash pipe key over here we're missing we're missing a bunch of different things uh, on this keyboard similarly you're missing caps lock etc um the way that this deals with that instead is by using layers so instead for instance of if i wanted an underscore which is not normally up here i would hold down this button and this button and i i by tapping that i get an underscore if i want a dash i do this if i want a plus i do this i do this etc um so you're able to get all of those keys but the way that you do them rather than moving your fingers further away is by just using combinations of keys by going layer down plus that or etc. And this actually allows a lot of flexibility. You can do a lot more with this keyboard than you can with a conventional non-programmable keyboard. The other thing you're probably noticing is that, well, most keyboards have a staggered layout here where Q, A, and Z are not directly above each other, W, S, and X, and it's not actually a super reasonable layout. It makes a lot of sense if you're designing a typewriter, but you aren't. Because when we extend our fingers, our fingers don't move. Now look, there, there is question as to whether this is better or not, but this is called an ortholinear layout. And in my experience, with my hands, it is actually much more comfortable, and it makes a whole lot more sense. And so what we're seeing here is a smaller keyboard that is layer-based and uses ortholinear uh, the, the key layout here, which is actually just a really nice thing. Then finally, one other quick note, this is using the QMK firmware system. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But anyways, that's why this is a weird keyboard. This is why it's so small. That's how it can manage to be so small and yet be as functional as a full-size keyboard for you. You can even make it so you've got a 10 key in here if you wanted to. Um, if that's your approach, will you hold down a lay? Anyways, I digress. So uh, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting keyboard here. So on the good side, to start with, this has actually surprisingly fast shipping. Those of you who are familiar with this company, Mass Drop, now known as Drop, know that very often the drop means that it's going to drop in, no oh, six to eight months and get the eventually. Um, but this is actually something they've teamed up with Amazon for, meaning you can just order one of these guys from Amazon and get it, you know, in a couple of days or something like that. That's something I really appreciate. And honestly, although, you know, supporting Amazon's got its own set of issues, um, it's definitely better than the really slow drop shipping times generally. Next thing, uh, one of the important things about any kind of a customized mechanical keyboard is that, well, this is a mechanical keyboard. What that means is you are using a mechanical switch in here. There is literally a piece of, uh, well, you can see here, this little copper piece that is only making connection between this part and this part when this key is depressed. And as a result, you can choose switches that have all kinds of different mechanical properties. Kind of switches I'm using here today from a company named Gateron, and they are the clear version of them. But the thing is, you can choose a variety of different switch types. They all have the same basic, you know, format down on the bottom there, but you can get anything ranging from relatively clicky but low effort, meaning there's not a whole lot required to push down, to very high effort, clicky sort of things, and anywhere in between. This is a really good way to really customize your typing experience, both in terms of sound, because, for instance, this is pretty quiet, versus... 
much louder, etc. Both in terms of sound and in terms of feel. If you like a very heavy key press, you can do that. If you like something super light, which is how I usually do, um, and it allows me to type a lot faster, you can choose that as well. This keyboard will allow you to use any MX compatible, meaning anything that fits the Cherry MX format, um, with their kind of uh, thing, and that's great. It also allows you to choose your keycaps. Um, th that is the top things that you put onto the key, right? I can just slip that on there, and then I can pull it off whenever I would like and swap that around. So if I decide I want to change things up, I want to find something new and more attractive, I can do that without any problem, whereas on a lot of keyboards, that's actually not something that's super possible. Next thing, um, this guy has a hot swap socket. What we see here is we. this is where I'm going to insert this last key, but you see down there at the bottom there, those two little holes right there, not the ones with the gold around them, but they're the two little holes right down there. I can actually take this switch and just make sure that these little pieces here are aligned properly. And then all I need to do to install this socket is to drop it in, or I'm sorry, to install the switch into those sockets is to drop it into place, make sure that everything feels all right, then press it in place, and then I just push the keypad down or uh, push the keycap down onto it. And there we go. This means that not only can I install switches at home without any soldering, which is often a factor when you're building a mechanical keyboard, but more importantly, um, it, it allows you to swap them out later on. So you might try one set of switches and then realize, I want a little more click in my life and swap those out with something else. That makes this really, really easy to try a bunch of keycaps, which is an expensive thing, but it's a very nice thing. I mean, it makes this a very low skill build. What I mean by that is you're not soldering anything. You're not looking at wiring schematics or anything like that. It, it, that's very nice. Next thing, if I actually plug this guy in, and I'm not plugging it into a computer here, I'm just plugging it into a USB power supply, because there's no point plugging it into a full-on computer. What we're going to see here is actually it made a little sound as it started up there. And then um, this actually has, in addition to just normal typing mode, if I do this, what I actually do is turn on music mode. And it's got some range. This is dumb. Do you need this? Absolutely not, no. But it is kind of cool, right? And it gives you the option to basically make chip tunes or whatever you'd like off of your keyboard. Um, it, 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 I don't know that this is necessary, but I do know that it makes me smile a little bit, so why not? You can also see that it does have some backlighting LEDs in there which are going to make a lot more sense in a non-metal case. But uh, nonetheless, th th that's definitely nice. Next thing, portability is huge on this guy. I mean, seriously, we are looking here at about four inches by about, oh, let's see here. He says needing a longer ruler. You can tell I normally look at things that are a lot smaller than that. But anyways, I digress. We're looking at, you know, under 10 by 4. Uh, that's not bad at all. And then on this dimension, it's uh, pretty small too, under an inch. And that makes this guy supremely portable. That means that even if you decide you're going to move around from workstation to workstation or something like that, you can just throw this guy in your pack and then pull it out and there you go. And because all the macros and such are stored on the unit itself rather than being a part of the computer, that makes it much more portable than many options. So that's good. Next thing, this is a very nice middle ground size. So the full 104 key keyboards that you might be used to are great, but they're huge. They involve a lot of movement from your hands off the home row. You reach it over here for this and then it makes your mouse be all the way over here which is very often an ergonomic sin, right? Um, this guy actually is designed to be much smaller, and the advantage of this is that every key is reachable just with your fingers on the home row, even if you have relatively small hands. There's nothing where you have to go all the way over to here. I'm not, like, reaching over to the side to get to enter or anything like that. I can do everything I need to from a, a very, very, well, close hand position. I can keep my hands basically resting uh, while I'm able to type everything I need to, and I think that's really nice. There are the smaller versions, for instance, there's a version called the, the, the plank um, that has uh, no number row, has nothing at the top. Numbers are on a layer two, so I, to get a one, I would type this and then two, three, four. Thing is, I use a lot of layers. I'm a scientist. I'm sorry, I use a lot of numbers, you know, science stuff, so it's going to be more important for me to have those accessible. Um, so I think this is a very nice middle ground here. You're able to uh, type most of what you need without a whole lot of layering, but the layering is, is right there for you to really uh, enhance things a little bit. So that's good. Next thing, this guy has really nice construction. Of all of the custom keyboards I've tried, and I've kind of fallen down that rabbit hole lately, let's be real here, this has really nice construction with good chamfering on it, nice metal actual screws going in there, some actual feet put on it, and even a little nice port for the USB, as well as this little guy, which lets you poke through to reset the keyboard and put it into a mode where you can flash the firmware again, although you can also do that by using a uh, shortcut uh, like that on the front of the keyboard. 
construction on this though is really nice you can even see there's a little metal separator between all the keys uh which i i do very much appreciate i think that, that that's great um and so i i think that it's very well built and this makes it feel like a very substantial piece of well gear frankly it's it's nice and then finally on the the, the good side of this this is very nice for smaller hands i you know i always joke in my my knife and watch reviews that i i have relatively small hands and this is really good for that right it's very easy to get where you need to go um and i find that this is just just a more comfortable way to type. Every time I've gone back to something else from this kind of a layout, it's just like, huh, I'm doing a lot of traveling here and I don't need to. So um, to me, at least all that's the good is that it keeps your fingers at the home row. It's got a great middle ground size, good construction, super portable. The music mode is cute. Um, hot swap sockets with choice of keycap that you can do, choice of switches, and uh, relatively fast shipping for anything with drop on it, right? On the great side to me, this firmware is amazing. QMK is the firmware here. This is an open source project. It's up on GitHub. But basically, think about it as a way to program your keyboard. And I know what you're thinking, Nick. Why do you need to program a keyboard? The keyboard is what you're program with that, that that feels really recursive. You're right, you're, I'm with you there. But the thing is, QMK allows you to do a number of things that are actually really powerful. We already talked about the layer thing. Where hitting J might do something, but hitting this button and J might do something else. This might send a dash, or this might send an underscore, this might send an equal sign, etc. And the thing is, as you're going to quickly find out, that gives you a lot more options than you have keys, right? Or I'm sorry, a lot more options generally. So you could have a single key that would do a macro, for instance. You could have a button that sends, do not get into watches the moment that you hit, you know, lay it down D or what have you. That's that's a very real possibility. You can add in shortcuts and things like that. So if you're regularly hitting a weird shortcut, like command, alt, option, tab, whatever, um, it's going to, you can just bind that to be this. And there you go. Problem solved. That's very, very nice. You can do macros that not only involve sending a bunch of text, but involves sending sequences of text. I have a macro that when I hit these two keys together, sends the sequence of things required to send an email from my, uh, from Mutt, my email client of choice, right? Um, you can do things like leader keys, where if I hit this guy, and I mean leader as in follow the leader rather than leader, a sane unit of measurement of volume. Um, but if I type this followed by Z, that opens Zoom, which unfortunately in everybody's life is kind of a common thing at the moment, right? Or if I hit this and followed by O, it opens OBS, the streaming software. If I hit this followed by B, it opens Obsidian, my, uh, uh, but anyways, uh, the leader key powerful uh, thing is very, very powerful because it just allows you to have a whole bunch of things bound on the keyboard. And that's that's really, really nice. You can also do things like this. For instance, if I hold down, or if I hit the this key right here, it gives me enter. But if I hold it down, it's shift. So I can still type a question mark by doing this. That's kind of neat, right? Um, having that ability is very nice. You can do mouse mode, where if you hold, for instance, this down, and then you can use these keys to maneuver your mouse, and this one to right-click, and this one to left-click. Details, but very, very, very powerful. To me, this is a game changer. The ability to customize my keyboard to this extent, given that this is a tool that I will sometimes use for eight hours a day, that actually is very, very powerful. And if you're only saving, you know, two or three seconds each time that you do something like that to open a piece of software, it doesn't seem like much. But if you do it 30 times a day, you just saved yourself a fair amount of time, right? And so this is a real game changer for me. And having this piece here, which allows you to do that programming... Uh, was kind of a gateway drug, and it sent me into a deep, deep spiral of, uh, of QMK customizable keyboards. So to me, what's great about this thing, and the only thing that makes this possible, is the QMK firmware, which is excellent. On the bad side, to start with um, that firmware I just talked about, not point and click exactly, right? This is something that you are going to fire up and you are going to be editing files. You're going to be editing configuration, then flashing the firmware, etc. It's a little geeky, right? It's going to take some time. Next thing, moving from a conventional staggered keyboard like this to an ortholinear keyboard is going to take a little bit of muscle memory adjustment too, and actually in both directions. If I type on a laptop, very often the first you know couple of seconds I'm typing, my, my brain is in the wrong place, so I kind of need to switch myself back. It's not the end of the world, and certainly the, the, the niceness of being on ortho uh, overcomes that for me, but it definitely took me a about, oh, three or four days before I was back at my normal typing speed on ortholinear. Not the end of the world, but it's a thing. Um, next thing set up on this guy is it does take a little bit of time because when this guy comes to you, it is a PCB, that is the, the, the actual circuit plate, a metal plate, this little case on the, the top there. And so uh, getting that set up, then adding in each one of the key switches, then adding in each one of the key caps... Well, that takes a little time. Oh, and by the way, this uh, this is an extra keycap from another keyboard. I've stolen this, this one. Anyways, I digress. 
But setup takes a little time. And you know what? It gives you a sense of ownership and the ability to customize it and whatnot, choose your keycaps, etc. Um, that can definitely be a thing. One thing that's also worth noting is the decision fatigue involved in all this because you have to choose everything rather than just like, I bought a keyboard. Now it's like, okay, I bought a keyboard base. Now what kind of keycaps look good? And then you go online, you find keycaps. Oh, these look good too. Oh, they, there's an addiction. And similarly, you have to figure out exactly what kind of switches you like best. What I actually recommend is you go out and you buy a switch tester, a little block of nothing. It's just PVC that has a bunch of switches in it of different kinds, and you'll get a sense very quickly of like, ooh, I like this. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, yeah, I, give me something big, loud, and clicky like that. You'll get a sense of what you like very quickly, um, but it's a little difficult to intuit all of that when you're just looking at numbers and things like that. So there's definitely a lot of decision-making involved. That's the case when you customize anything. Next thing, this is relatively tall. Like I said, if we look at this guy off the bench, we're looking maybe an inch and a quarter, maybe closer to an inch, depending on how... Nonetheless, it is definitely a tall uh, keyboard. And that actually can be a downside for somebody, particularly if you are a person who uh, has a certain... Like, long upper arms actually mean that you want a very narrow keyboard that's very close to your desk because you want to minimize the distance. You, know, you don't want to have your wrist going upwards onto your keyboard. This kind of motion is never very good. And so this is a little bit on the taller side. Keep that in mind. Next thing, this definitely is lacking some things, right? It is a little bit trickier. If you are typing, for instance, underscores or backslashes, etc., all the time, that can be a problem. This little key for me, actually, I will very often use, uh, I'll map this guy to ba uh, the full, no, backslash, um, because I use backslash all the time, just in the, the, the kinds of things that I am doing. And so missing that can be difficult. Similarly, if you like a 10-key number pad, well, and this sure doesn't have one. Like I said, you can bind this area to be a 10-key number pad, and you hold down a button, but still, that, that, that's something you want to keep in mind. Um, next thing, keycap sets for these ortholinear keyboards are a little harder to find, particularly all the modifier keys, etc. And by the way, this is the arrow key layout. This takes a bit to get used to. They're a little tricky to find. Not the end of the world, but it is definitely something that you're going to want to keep in mind, and you're not going to have as much variety as somebody who's just looking for a good old-fashioned 104 key um, keycap set. Next thing, the backlights on these guys are key you but they sure don't do a whole lot, right? You can see that they are in there, right? And you can see just the slightest hint of it. And you can actually program it in such a way that you see, uh, for instance, which layer you're on based on the color of the background there, where you get a little tune depending on which layer. You, you can play those games, but the LEDs with this metal case do very little for you. If you get one of the plastic cases, which is going to be lighter, by the way, this is a little bit on the heavy side, um, but if you get a lighter, uh, if you get the plastic case, you'll probably see more of that, but it doesn't do you a whole much good, right? Um, next thing in the music mode, and I'm nitpicking like crazy here, you can only play one note at a time, right? And as a result, this ends up feeling very much like, you know, Game Boy uh, music. That's, that's really all you get. Um, don't look at this as a replacement for your piano. Duh. And then finally, on the um, on the bad side here, this is a pricey proposition. To go to something like this, you know, you can get a keyboard that is going to be cheap, right? You can get it. It's going to have rubber dome switches. The switches are going to feel a lot worse. They're, 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 there is a major step up in quality going to any mechanical. But still, you are looking just for the part of this that is the plates, the PCB, the, the circuit board that is, and then the, the, the surround on the inside there. Just that alone is 155 bucks. Then you're going to want to spend like maybe 30 bucks, 40 bucks for a set of keycaps, for a set of switches. You're looking at maybe another 30 bucks. Ultimately, you're north of 200 bucks for a relatively small thing. And 200 bucks can buy a lot of keyboard, particularly if you're willing to do something with a little bit less in the way of feature set, right? My current daily driver keyboard actually costs a lot less. That's the uh, KBO BFO 9000. Uh, but nonetheless, um, they, 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 they cost a whole bunch less. This is a very pricey proposition. And getting into mechanical keyboards is itself a dangerous thing. So to me, all of that is the baddest, that it's pricey. The music mode only really allows one note at a time. The LEDs aren't doing much for you. Keycap sets are trickier. There's no 10 key. Some of the symbols are trickier on this approach. It's tall. Setup takes some time. Ortholinia takes a little adjustment, and QMK is not point and click. On the ugly front, there were two things here that are ugly, but I think they're both a little subjective, but they were very much for me. The first one is, ergonomically, this might not be a great idea, because the thing is, Depending on how you sit, one of the major problems, this kind of thing, where you are typing with your wrist bent out like this, is actually not a great thing. Uh, ergonomically speaking, this can lead to all sorts of pain. And especially if you are a person with wide shoulders, there's actually a really good argument that you want your hands to be much further apart, even though they're doing that. This is the genesis of the split key.
keyboards. This is the KBO Freak. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the KBO um, Nyquist. Uh, and I don't have any keycaps on it because I put the keycaps from this onto this for the review. But nonetheless, I mean, what I can do here is spread these guys apart. That way, my wrists are actually going to be straight, depending on. And this is definitely something that was a problem for me. Um, I really hurt myself ergonomically in grad school. It's just a simple fact. And so now, I, and then I started using a split keyboard. I figured, do I really still need that? This guy taught me that, yes, yes, I do. So you should definitely think about doing a split keyboard. And there are definitely split versions of this. The KBO Nyquist is, uh, Nyquist, that is, is among them. And I'll do a review of that guy later on. But nonetheless, um, this is definitely going to tell you whether you need that. And having everything be very small and your wrist constantly in this kind of an angle can be a, th a bad thing for you. The other issue with this guy, and the most dangerous part of it, is that it can get you into mechanical keyboards. And do not... Get in the mechanical keyboards. So, anyways, um, the, the, those two things are the ugly, is that it could get you into mechanical keyboards, and ergonomically, having everything very close together might actually be a problem, and splitting is very often a good idea. On the uh, final conclusion front, this is actually a very neat little gateway keyboard, and I don't mean gateway to typing, I mean gateway to keyboards. And there is a slight difference there, right? It's the difference between somebody who just owns, for instance, you know, a kitchen knife or something like that, or they've got a little utility knife for something they use for all their cutting needs. And then there are the people who go nerdy on it. Then there are the people who are like, wow, you know, look at this. I, I This pocket knife has zirconium on it. You know, that's the level that we're talking about right here. This is not a keyboard for people who just need to type a little bit. This is a keyboard for people who want to be really nerdy about what is already a very, very nerdy thing. But it is really great at that, because it's got your choice of switches and caps, so you can really customize it to your heart's content. It's got hot swap sockets, allowing you to shake, uh, change things up, make mistakes, so to speak, with music mode, portability, great construction, a good size, a good design, and amazing flexibility in the firmware. I, I, I kid you not, once you figure out how to do that firmware, you're going to be like, oh god, I'm not going back, this is good, right? Um, It is geeky to configure at first, it takes a little while to adjust, the setup of the whole thing takes time, it's a little on the taller side, LED these aren't doing much in the metal case here. Music mode is mostly just a gimmick. It's cute, though. Um, it's pretty pricey. Ergonomically, this thing might not make sense. You might want to be spread further apart. And it will get you into mechanical keyboards. Ultimately, my feeling on the Prionic here is that this is a really nice... Pardon me. This is a really nice first step for a bunch of folks out there in the world. Because it'll show you what a compact layout does show you how it works. It'll give you an idea of layers and the fact that there is actually a great deal of strength in that kind of a system there. Um, it gives you a sense of uh, an ortholinear keyboard and makes you decide, you know, hmm, my hands really like this, or no, this doesn't make all that much sense to me. It'll show you QMK and it'll get you started there. It'll get you like, oh, wow, hold on, this is, I, I have the power. Um, and it'll do it in a way that's pricey, but not all that complex. In this case, you are definitely paying a little bit of extra money to drop in OLKB for getting a bunch of things done easily here. For instance, you know, having hot swap sockets rather than having to uh, solder all the switches in there together on y yourself. But you are definitely paying a little bit of a premium for that. And so this is something that you do, and you know, yeah, I'm paying a little bit more, but it's taking some of the pain out of the process there. And so like I said, I think this is the very, this is a very good first step keyboard. If you are thinking, hmm, maybe I should try one of those weird keyboards that the weird people use, this is not a bad approach. I think that a lot of people are going to end up viewing the Prionic as a step stone into something more unique and customized, right? You know, I, I think for a lot of folks, they're, they're going to do this, and they're going to be like, ooh, this is good, and then they're going to go down the rest. Rabbit hole. They're going to find a solution that is not just good for them, but that is optimal for them. You know, in my case, this guy led me to think like, oh God, I really like this layering thing. I really like not having to move my hands all over town to get to different things, but I really want a split keyboard, which then sent me to the Nyquist, which is exactly this same thing, by the way. I mean, if we take a look at these things next to each other, this is literally the exact same key layout. It's just spread apart further. This has some under switch LEDs I've customized. But anyways, this led me to the Nyquist, which I actually do use again with keycaps. They're just on the Brionic at the moment, but nonetheless, that is, uh, that, that, that's definitely a thing. And, and so I can see this showing a lot of folks why going the custom right, uh, the, the custom route, the customizable route, this is going to help a lot of things do that. But that said, especially if you've got the physiology for it, if you don't have big, broad shoulders, or, or if you just happen to like a very uh, compact and portable form factor, which by the way, allows your mouse to be right here, which ergonomically can be a win, right? 
this is going to make a lot of folks fall in love. And I can definitely see if you've got the physiology, the desire, and the wallet for it, this guy right here could very much be a purchasing priority for you. So anyways, I hope this is interesting to you. Don't worry, the rest of my content, my normal stuff will be coming back to the channel, but uh, hopefully I've just gotten some of you in the mechanical keyboards. Do not get into mechanical keyboards. And uh, have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.